the general purpose of financial reporting is to provide information about the reporting entity that is useful to existing and potential investors, lenders, and other creditors in making decisions about giving resources to the entity. The users of this kind of information need it so as to understand the following about the entity. Number one, the economic resources of the entity. Second, the claims against the entity. And third, changes in the entity's economic resources and claims. Hello guys, I'm Moses from ZeretVentures.com and this video is about IAS 23, which is to say, borrowing cost. Before we go any further, ensure you download the notes that come with the video from the link in the video description or from our website zeretventures.com. Businesses are conducted at a cost. This cost is either from our own pocket or other people's. Getting it from other people means borrowing and this comes at a cost of its own. Borrowing costs are interest and other costs incurred by an entity in connection with borrowing of funds. IAS 23 requires that eligible borrowing costs should be capitalized as part of initial cost of the asset. Of course, this only happens if the assets are qualifying assets, which leads to the question, what are qualifying assets? Qualifying asset is an asset that necessarily takes a substantial period of time to get ready for its intended use or sale. The period here could be at least one year. Depending on the circumstance, any of the following may be qualifying assets, inventories, manufacturing plants, power generation facilities, intangible assets, investment properties, etc. Note, financial assets and inventories that are manufactured or otherwise produced over a short period of time are not qualifying assets. Assets that are ready for their intended use or sale when purchased are not qualifying assets. And now, let's look at capitalization. Capitalization involves adding borrowing costs to the cost of assets. Only borrowing costs that are directly attributable to the acquisition, constructions, or production of a qualifying asset can be capitalized as part of the cost of the assets. And therefore, total cost of the asset is equals initial cost plus borrowing cost, that is, interests. In fact, here is an illustration don't worry, the question is in the notes, so you can download and check it out. On 1st January 2016, ABC Limited borrowed 1.5 million to finance the production of two assets, both of which were expected to take a year to build. Work started during 2016, the loan facility was drawn and incurred on January 2016 and was utilized as follow, with the remaining funds invested temporarily on 1st July 2016. So here's how that one worked out, asset A and asset B, and here are the corresponding debts on the amount. The borrowing rate was 9%, and ABC Limited can invest surplus funds at rate of 7%. Required. Number one, calculate the borrowing cost to be capitalized for each of the assets. Number two, the cost of each asset as at 31st December 2016. So here's the solution. Borrowing cost can be capitalized as follows. We have asset A and asset B. Borrowing cost, that is the interest from January to December. So for asset A, it's half a million times 9%. The 9% is given as the borrowing rate. And that gives us 45,000. And for asset B, it's a million times 9%, which gives us 90,000. Less income. Now, on 1st July to December, remember, we are told that the remaining funds were to be invested temporarily meaning this is now income and not a cost. Basically, it's cash flow, rather cash inflow, and it can only affect the second half of the investment. So that becomes 7% times 250,000, remember, times 6 over 12. So it only takes half a year, right, from July to, to deck. And that gives us 8750. And for asset B, 7% times half a million times 6 over 12, and that will give us 17500 So the net borrowing cost for A, that is 6 to 50, subtracting that one from that one. And for B, it's going to be 72500 So that gives us the borrowing cost to be capitalized, basically the net borrowing cost. The second question was cost of assets as at 31st deck 2016. Now, in order for us to get the cost of assets, we need to get the costing card on assets. So for A, 
it was half a million and for B it was one million. And then we add that to the net borrowing cost, which in this case for A was 36 to 50, as we've calculated, and for B was 70 to 500. So the total cost of asset is for A, it's going to be 536,250, and for B is 1,072,500. So in the example, the rate we used was 9% because it was given. What if the capital rate is not provided? If capitalization rate is not provided, then a weighted average should be determined. Again, here's an example for such. So X Limited had the following loans at the beginning and at the end of the given year. So on 1st January, we are told this is how it was. And on 31st December, this is how it was. The loans are given as follow. The 8.9% debenture was issued to fund the construction of qualifying asset. There is a piece of mining equipment, construction of which was to begin on July 2006. Okay, yeah, let's assume it's just a date anyway. On 1st January 2006, ABC Limited began a construction using existing borrowing. Expenditure drawn for construction was 30 million shillings on 1st January 2006 and 20 million on 1st October 2006. So required, calculate the capitalization rate for ABC Limited and second, the borrowing cost to be capitalized. Capitalization rate is equal to weighted average rate. Now we are going to use 2008 and 2009. We are going to ignore 2007 simply because it's not a qualifying asset since it only occurs for a fraction of the year. So for the 10%, that is a 10% bank loan for 2008, we'll take 10% times 120 over 120 plus 80 plus the 9.5% bank loan which was supposed to be repayable in 2009 multiply that by 80 over 120 plus 80 and so the capital rate is therefore 9.8% so again I'll just like to point out we've ignored the last one 8.9 debenture repayable in 2007 simply because it doesn't uh, match as a qualifying asset it's only it only occurs for a fraction of the year so the second question the borrowing cost to be capitalized the 30 million times 9.8 plus 20 million times 9.8 Multiply that one by 3 over 12. Remember, the last the last one occurred in October. And so you're only going to use the three months. And so that gives us 3.43 million shillings as uh, the borrowing cost to be capitalized. So if this is overwhelming, just pause the video, go over the question, understand the question, and then try to do it again, this time step by step. So let's talk about disclosures required in relation to borrowing costs. And uh, there are three. Number one being the amount of borrowing cost capitalized during the period. Second, capitalization rate used to determine the amount of borrowing cost eligible for capitalization. And last, whether the asset capitalized is a qualifying asset or not. So in conclusion, I hope you can now explain what borrowing costs are, what are qualifying assets, how capitalization is done, and disclosures required in relation to borrowing costs. Again, feel free to leave a comment, like, and subscribe if you fancy. And see you in the next lesson. From all of us at Zeret Network, cheers.